Hello, my name is Danny Schechter, and I was the offense coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Gonzaga College High School uh, this past offseason. I have stepped down to move back home to Chicago, Illinois, uh, to be closer to my family and all that good stuff. So uh, just a quick little intro. want to give a big thank you to uh, Brian from Intentionally Grounded for inviting me to present and clinic. So today, uh, the clinic that I'm going to be doing deals with A-gap power, and my focus is going to be on the technique that we use for our fullback, which it, we call the gallop technique. So first, we'll go over some stuff with power, and then after that, we'll get into the gallop technique that we utilize uh, for our kickout blocks on power. Uh, so, you know, power scheme and fullback gallop technique, a uh, couple pictures that I think start state, you know, what power brings to a football team quite well. Uh, so, you know, lining up in a formation like Stanford right there, doesn't matter how much seven on seven you practice when you get punched in the mouth, uh, especially when you're a power football team and you want to line up a bunch of big boys and punch people in the face. Uh, it doesn't matter how many uh, seven on sevens you've done. It doesn't matter the cool ladder drills uh, and the Instagram cone drills and stuff. Um, get ready to be punched right in the mouth. Uh, and then the, the feeling that you get when you run power and being able to run the ball down a defense's throat doesn't get much better than that. Um, and at, at, at the bottom, you can see my name, the ridiculous spelling of it, as well as my Twitter and Instagram handles. So a little background on me. I'm going to go through this super duper quickly. Uh, I was an equipment manager at Illinois State University, and then I became a student assistant coach um, uh, as an undergraduate. was really lucky to be under some great coaches like Justin Fuente and Brad Cornelson uh, and, and Holman Wiggins and several others who have gone on to do amazing things. Uh, I was at Jack Britt High School under Richard Bailey for a season, uh, and then I was able to become the running back coach at NEO in Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, for Northeastern Oklahoma A&M Junior College. After that, I was lucky and um, earned a graduate assistant receiver coaching position at Arkansas Tech University. Go you wonder boys. After that, it was time for me to get out of the college football world. I didn't like recruiting a whole lot. So if you want to be successful coaching college football, you better love recruiting. And uh, that was not my style. And besides, I think high school football coaches and the lower levels have the greatest impacts on the young men and women who play the sport uh, before they are able to gra uh, graduate and go on to college. So, you know, wanting to make a bigger impact in my life, I felt like I could do that at the high school level. I was fortunate enough to earn a job uh, under Randy Trivers uh, at Leesburg High School. After three seasons there, he got the head coaching job at Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C. He asked me to go with, um, and after some good conversations with my then girlfriend, now wife, uh, we decided that we would go ahead, make the journey from Florida up to D.C., and it was a blast. And now I'm going to be somewhere in Illinois. Uh, and, you know, I know this is uh, part of this is a mental health side of things. And, you know, as, as football coaches, we all do a bunch of work at times, especially, you know, it's thankless um, and, and you don't really feel appreciated. You feel highly stressed out uh, and you're, you're going through all of this, putting a lot of pressure on yourself and on your families for like a couple thousand dollars. Uh, not that we're in it for the money, but it is nice to look at the bank account at the end of the day and have a little something to show. So, you know, I say all of this because uh, you want to make sure that you're at a place that you are appreciated, uh, but most of all, you need to make sure that you are spending your time wisely. Uh, so as a young single coach, the time that I was spending during football, and I could do it infinitely, basically, because I just had all the time. And I didn't have any, you know, major priorities standing in the way. Uh, whereas, you know, what the, the, the main thing, the biggest thing, the most important thing I learned uh, over these last couple of years is, uh, you know, we all know that family is important, but spending the time and prioritizing your family. So uh, I no longer could say that, um, Stroking my ego and being the coach at Gonzaga was the most important thing 
in my life. Uh, my family is the most important thing in my life. So I needed to do a better job of and help my own mental health uh, and my family out by saying, you know what, uh, as much as I would love to coach at Gonzaga, one of the best schools in the nation, both, you know, football wise, athletically, as well as academically. And I loved working for Randy Trivers and, you know, as well as the many men that I was able to work with on the staff. Um, you know, my family's the most important thing. I only got one chance to be the best husband and father that I could be. So uh, that's the reason why I stepped down and decided, hey, let's move back home. Let's get closer to my parents who live in Illinois, my brother and his family. Um, so family first, uh, mental health first, happiness first, more, far more important than, you know, coaching at a big level school, whether that's college or high school or whatever. Um, Football is football, no matter where you go. Young men, young women who play the sport, you know, they're going to be great people to coach uh, no matter where you are. So make the most of where you are. And it doesn't have to be at the highest of levels. If you love football, it's going to be great no matter where you're at. Uh, so the most important thing I learned, prioritize family. And that makes sure that means a time commitment, uh, both in the season and off season. With all that said, let's get into power. So why power? Uh, I think there's a major cost benefit uh, that you have to do. Uh, I, I experienced trying to do a wide zone, outside zone, whatever you want to call it, along with being a gap team. Um, and it's really hard. Uh, you have to have a, a great time commitment to be good at whatever you're doing. I think when it comes to gap scheme and when it comes to power, uh, the, the cost of it isn't as high as being a zone team, especially like wide zone. Um, uh, but the benefit of it is huge. So I think cost low, huge benefit. It makes sense to be a gap team, especially with power as well as its variations. Uh, it does instill a physical mentality. At least you could sell it that way. Uh, the name alone, power, uh, evokes strength and the kicking of an ass that you're going to do. Um, and that's always a great mentality to sell to your players. Is it necessarily factual or true? Meh. But if you're able to sell it, then it becomes true. The ability to change gaps on the fly, causing a, a read and reaction from the defense, being able to add gaps to another side. Once again, that makes a defender have to think on the fly. Oh, I got to do this. And now here's my Here's my job because this guard pulled or that tackle pulled or, you know, that Y pulled around, whatever it might be. Uh, it makes it a little bit difficult on the defenders. Uh, I think we are entering a zone world, which reminds me of one of my all-time favorite songs, Pimp Juice by Nelly. Uh, you know, the lyrics of, that's why I got my fade, everybody had braids, and now they switch to fades and I'm thinking about braids. So if everybody's going zone, it makes sense. Go gap go power. People are spreading it out and everything. Well, let's try and pack it in a little bit, bring in some big bodies uh, when they want to have five and six defensive backs on the field. I think maybe most crucial to all of this is I know power. I, I, I know uh, the compliments to power. I know better how defenses try and take it away and how I can build constraints and build uh, a, a system around it. Um, I think I think that's really important to think about whenever you're deciding, you know, are we going to be gap? Are we going to be zone? Are we going to do it all? Are we going to run the gamut? Make sure you are teaching what you know. And then I think the last part where it says, you know, for detailed and nuanced technique, find an offensive line coach. Uh, this clinic is not going to be an offensive line coach clinic. I have coached offensive line for a year before. I love linemen. I love learning technique and fundamentals, but it takes a lot of time to be great as an offensive line coach. I don't think you need to have played the position in order to be a great offensive line coach, similar to how you don't have to have a brain tumor in order to become a brain surgeon. So, you know, make sure you're coaching what you know. Uh, I've had a lot more experience with gap. I've had a lot more experience with power. So that's why it's a better thing for me to do versus, you know, trying to, you know, go, go another direction. Now I could, and I can learn it and everything, but at this moment, at this time, uh, I'm better with power. Um, and then, you know, it's also, okay, 
who, who do I have around me? How well do they know uh, gap, zone, whatever? And can we implement other things? Uh, so you have to take all those factors in uh, when you're deciding, hey, what's our run game going to be? So on and so forth. Uh, coach what you know and uh, coach it great. All right, so two back power, the mission statement. Power is a series of down blocks and double teams with two chances to kick out the defense. Uh, shout out to Coach Dub on Twitter for all of his pictures and everything he does. I just stole that uh, from him. I appreciate it. I thought it looked really, really nice. Um, and then, you know, you got the H in red. For us, that'll be the F, the fullback, uh, with, his, uh, with his kick out block highlighted in red. Uh, I think it's important for the players to know what, what the play is, what we are trying to do. Um, so we're trying to create that windshield wiper effect with the down blocks coming, and then boom, here come the uh, the kickout blocks coming. Um, and then also, it is a physical football play, and you sell that stuff to your players. It creates that physical mentality that I spoke about earlier, and it just gets them ready to kick some booty. So with power, we talk about the gap principle. Uh, I got this from my boy, Coach Colin Casey, great dude, uh, great online coach, even better hair. Uh, so the gap principle is simply this. If I have an immediate gap threat, I have to block that gap threat. So right here, you can see the circle. He has a defender to his inside, so he needs to block that gap threat. Okay, now we have another circle, okay, and you can see to this black circle's left, there is no gap threat. This allows for this player to stay thick and square and help his neighbor. So this would be an opportunity for the black circle to create a double team with the white circle. Most importantly, how is this accomplished? You have to keep your hand and your eye in gap at all times. It's very easy to say this. It's a lot harder to do, right? When we put our hand on something, we want to instinctively look at it. Uh, but I have to be have great eye discipline because you don't know, know what might come shoot through your gap. And you got to go and take that because the gap principle, if you have an immediate gap threat, you must block it. So eyes in gap, hand in gap at all times. All right, so everything works perfectly on paper. Here are a few different uh, uh, drawings, uh, a few pictures of uh, gap scheme, a gap power. Once again, I'm not going to go through all the nitty gritty on the techniques and all that stuff. Uh, if, if you want that, uh, there are guys who have taught and coached a gap power uh, that are experts at it uh, at every level, schematically and technically. Um, and I highly recommend going and checking them out. Run the Power did a great podcast with Connor Riley, um, the uh, offensive line coach, I think, at K State. Um, you know, in, and there are the dudes at North Dakota State who teach this. You got uh, Scott Fuchs, who's at Kansas right now. Uh, he has a great clinic on this. It's available too. Uh, so go in. If, if you want the technique and all those details, I recommend checking that out. Uh, so for, for how we've done it, um, you know, the, the play side uh, for the offensive line, those are going to be gaps. Those are going to be the down blocks and the double teams. Uh, for what we've done uh, with the tight end is we, we let him be the D gap guy uh so that way whether there is or is not a tight end the offensive line and the fullback are not impacted by his rule uh so play side tackle he's got the b gap uh working a lateral combo i think one of the biggest keys to this especially when it comes to a gap power is it's a hash play so that three technique uh attack uh defensive tackle in the first picture on the left side you don't really want to come off of that until you've moved him past the center line. Uh, so, hey, if the ball's on the hash, he should be moved, that defender should be moved past the hash before you go and climb to the second level. Um, and that's where the idea of you're going to reinforce the play side guard on whether it's a zero technique, a shade, a one, a two eye, two, uh, or a three technique, the tackle play side needs to reinforce that block, create movement that is more important than getting up to the backer. Um, and the reason is because we are targeting a fit. We are not necessarily targeting people. Uh, so if they scrape over the top, uh, we have 
players who can help be correctors in, uh, in order to make sure that uh, we've blocked the fit uh, more important than blocking the people. Now, as we've created that lateral double team, there is a possibility that you're going to have to you out, uh, which which means that the, the backer has scraped over the top of my down block, and now i got to turn and go you out, kind of creates another uh, possibility of a kick out, uh, which also will help the back whoop, wind that thing back. Play side guard has a play side A gap. The aiming point for the guard, if there is a gap threat, is the center of the defender. The key there is getting your hits on track at the center of where that defender is. Uh, you cannot turn, okay, or help on a loose three or a four on. Um, that, this is eyes in, eyes in gap, hand in gap. If he is too wide, then that tackle is going to have to take it. Uh, and then the backside guard as an ultimate corrector can help on a double bump. The center has a backside A gap. Uh, you want to square shuffle and help pin that backside nose. Uh, just teaching point for the center is that the guard is leaving. So that A gap is no longer just that, you know, uh, uh, one foot split between he and the guard. Uh, it is now the split between he and the tackle because the guard is leaving and putting a gap on the front side, taking one away from the backside. The, let's go to the backside tackle real quick, um, uh, who kind of finishes out the down block portion of this. Uh, he's going to have a hinge block, uh, which means that he's going to secure the B gap, right? That backside backer shoots through uh, that backside B gap, right? This will right here in that top left picture, he shoots through. Um, uh, we, we need to be able to handle that. Uh, first, because um, you know now they have a nose and a will, and the center can't block both of them at the same time, um, unless he's just that damn good. The tackle will secure the B gap. Nothing comes. Boom. He's going to get back out to the C gap hinge to that defensive end. Key here is that the backside three technique, which we can see in the middle picture, really needs to help flatten that defender out help the center out because that's a long way for a guy who's got to snap the ball, um, uh, step and snap at the same time or drive because we don't step. Uh, we drive and snap at the same time to get to that backside three technique. So we need the backside tackle to help. Um, and then just a backside is front side mentality. Uh, the running back is going to hit this thing A gap to A gap, right? It's a tight tight window that he has to hit so he can't have penetration and leakage closing those that a gap down coming from the backside so uh hey backside tackle you might be on the backside but man on a gap power the backside is the front side also be patient backside guard uh he's gonna do a shuffle pull is what it's taught not necessarily the classic skip pull this is a little bit more patient because you have to be able to read the play side hip of the play side uh, sorry, the, the hip of the play side tackle, the near hip of the play side tackle. You want to get just enough depth to get to get past and behind the center, stay square, and then that tackle is going to tell you if you're going to end up uh, going vertical, like an iso block, if you have to go around that tackle because he's kicking booty on that double team, or if there is opposite color jersey inside of him that's where the double bump is created um so that way hey you got a b gap throw i'm gonna bump that as i get vertical on my path to uh whoever the a gap run fitter is going to be the play side tight end like i said he's gonna be the d gap uh so the offensive line fullback they're responsible really for c to c uh, the play side tackle, he's going to be a uh, play side tight end is going to be responsible for the D gap. He's either going to base block or arc. Big coaching point on this is that he needs to understand leverage to landmark uh, and make sure he wins on the inside uh, portion of that defender. Backside tight end, uh, we have him as a hinge. Uh, we tell him to mirror the backside tackle. Uh, but if there is no threat that he really has to be worried about, uh, then we also you know, the next coaching point will be like, hey, instead of wasting you at the line of scrimmage, let's go cut off a uh, safety um, and, and try and, you know, get him up on uh, a big body instead of just wasting him. Uh, the fullback, and we'll get into the gallop technique, uh, mandatory C-gap kickout. A little bit harder at the college level in high school for where I've had experience. Uh, you can definitely make this a mandatory kickout. Uh, the tailback, uh, he's going to take a little bit of a timing step 
So a little bit of a touch with his play side foot and then drop step with his backside foot. His path is in midline of the center because he's got a gap to a gap to make this play happen. Uh, we don't want him to take a lateral step and get wide or a lateral step with the toe turned out because when your toe turns out, your hip turns out, then your shoulder turns out. And now we're not pointed at the a gap. We're pointing at the B or the C gap. We need to hit this thing square and downhill in the A gaps. Uh, the whole fight is to get four yards at least. Um, and, uh, and then for the quarterback, you got to get off the midline. Uh, so I usually say quarterback, we're going to be at six. But for A gap power, we're going to be at like 530 and 630 as we reverse out, get off the midline, uh, let the tailback have the A gaps. And we want to get the ball to the tailback as deep as possible. All right, so two back power is beautifully ugly, right? And, and you saw the drawings that I had, and I will tell you this, that teaching it from the scheme to the technique, the how, who, what, when, where, why, uh, is far more important than having very pretty drawings. Now, I got to give props to these guys with their drawings. Uh, on the left, you got Matt Drinkle. I love how he uh, teaches uh, his, his gap stuff with the A spot, B spot. Uh, in the middle, you got Coach Dan Casey, who is a uh, just a flat-out stud of a coach uh, and a great man. Uh, and then on the right, we have a USA football, you know, first down. And those drawings are excellent. Uh, they're, they're definitely better than what I had on the previous slide. But it's not about pretty drawings, right? Uh, uh, we, any nerd can get on to PowerPoint and make a good drawing and all that stuff. Now, with that said... Uh, drawings can help learning, so uh, being able to teach it well and then having great drawings like this only enhance the, you, you know, visual learners. Uh, so it's not like having good drawings is a bad thing, uh, but don't kill yourself and, you know, spend a ton of money on, on some of these systems uh, when, you know, a hand drawing can work just as well if you can teach it right. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get to some of the, uh, the video that I have to go along with power. Uh, so let me switch my square, uh, share screen, what's going on. That's a nice handsome face that you see right there. Um, uh, and then let's share it up. Boom, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go through, uh, just highlight you know, some important things. Once again, I'm not gonna get too technically into the details here. Once again, there are better, smarter guys that you can go clinic and listen to uh, when it comes to that. Um, so right here, uh, this is a, uh, we're in overtime, um, you know, got to go score, uh, second down and five right here, I believe. Uh, the big thing here that I wanted to highlight with the tailback is how he does a good job of staying square uh, in, in, in the shotgun. So you can see the timing step and the drop, and he's nice and square, A gap to A gap. Uh, and that allows him to, boom, hit it right in the A gaps. And now we're on to the second, third level, boom, touchdown. Chicks dig touchdowns. All right, let's get the end zone view right here, right? So we'll see the tight end with the base block. Uh, we got a four eye right here. So this left guard uh, should not help. Plus he has a gap threat. Uh, so with the gap principle, he's got to go ahead and block, and, and block that up. You can see the center. Uh, he's got an A gap threat, not staying square enough right here. Uh, right guard, the shuffle pull. You can see his head turned. He's reading the tackle, uh, sees the tackle, gets enough movement, feels my best insertion point, is outside the tackle and guard, gets vertical, and although he doesn't hit him, that dude has to duck around that, uh, that kick out block by him, and the tailback's able to hit it right off the inside hip in the A gap. We'll highlight the fullback more. You can see the, a little bit of the gallop technique. Uh, the only way to really hit a human being properly is near foot, near shoulder, and you can see him executing that right there. On the back side, the tight end does have a threat. So he says, hey, you know what? I'm going to hinge and mirror the uh, tackle right here. And you can see the tackle. He's pretty quick on his hinge, uh, but, you know, doesn't feel like that will linebacker is really a threat. So, you know what? I'm going to step down and quickly hinge backside is front side mentality. You have the will linebacker, a little bit lost in the sauce, misfitting it. And when they misfit, we hit. Big zig touchdowns. Just got to wa watch it one more time for posterity because, man, love watching A-gap power go for tutties. All right, right here, out of the pistol set this time, let's take a look, right? Fullback, or sorry, the tailback here, too fast, 
right? You see the timing, but you don't see the drop step. So right now he's already, you know, hugging the butt of the, of the guard. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more separation. A yard and a half, two yards is a pretty good landmark to give them as far as how much separation there should be uh, between when that, when, when the tailback um, uh, is, you know, his depth away from the, uh, from the guard. Okay, boom. And then, you know, this is where tailbacks, you guys got to make some money, make somebody miss. Okay, as far as the blocking scheme goes, front side tight end on the left, he's going to base block. All right, now the fullback right here, uh, he's got the C gap. So he's going to go right off the butt of the left tackle here. All right, there's nothing, no defender right in the C gap on the LOS, so no, not a true kick out. So he's going to climb it almost as like an ISO block. Now, He's hitting with the incorrect shoulder right here, and you see him get, boom, jacked up a little bit. But that does force the defender to get outside of the A gap, so he does do his job. It's just not a, necessarily a great job of doing it. Uh, left tackle real and left guard, good job on the, uh, on the movement. A little bit of a catch and a fall by the left guard. He ain't cheating, he ain't trying. Center right here, okay, he's got a long ways to go, and you can see the right tackle doing a really good job of helping him out and hinging the uh, tight end, you know, he's going to mirror him. He's like, oh, man, he's got to go help out the center, so I'm going to really be patient and secure the C-gap as opposed to climbing up to number 15, the safety. But this is why if you can get the backside tight end up to the safety, you can see it can help create an even bigger play if the tailback's going to break that first tackle. All right, quarterback right here, he's staying on the midline. You can see the tailback kind of having to turn his shoulders and get back into the A-gap. Uh, what you know, wherever the, the, the quarterback is, he's got to get off the midline. So, uh, whoever that quarterback coach was, me needs to coach that guy better. All right, this right here is, um, you know, kind of out of an empty set, uh, using the quarterback for our, uh, our, our power play right here. And he's just trying to take a little bit of a timing, um, and then hitting it, you know, a gap to a gap. You can see the fullback. Right, not a great job with his gallop technique. We'll talk more about it uh, later on. Right tackle, he's staying on that double team until until he's gotten the uh, the movement. So he's like, I haven't got enough movement. I'm gonna stay on this. Um, and hey, does that impact you being able to get to that backer scraping? Sure, but you know what? You know, backs got to make guys miss. Um, and right here, you can see that backer. Boom, he inserts. He misfits it. So we're we're good to go anyway. All right, once again, this one uh, with a little bit of a, um, a quarterback uh, read power um, uh, flavor with the tailback working across. Tight end, base block, right? Leverage to landmark. So, um, you know, you could see one, uh, the defensive end, really good player, uh, sent, sent up linebacker, hopping outside with the play fake. Uh, you know, the, the tight end doing a decent job, keeping leverage, leverage to landmark. Right, number 62. Good example of clearing his gap, nothing's there, and boom, you out right there, right? And if we have, a, if we do a better job on the backside with our backside as front side mentality, uh, this is an even bigger play, right? So center right here, a little tough on him, gets knocked off, right? You can see the you know backside uh, player who climbs over the top and ends up making this uh, making this tackle when we should have the quarterback. Uh, on this backdoor cut one-on-one -on -one with the safety, really. Take a look at the at the shuffle. Nice and square, right? Easy one. I should be going vertical right off the, 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 the tackle's butt right here. Boom. Going to kick out the first thing that shows up. That's a, that's a solid job by the left guard. All right, from under center, once again, quarterback, get off the midline. Uh, I'd say the fullback is too close in his alignment. He should be at a little bit more depth. Um, you, you can see they got uh, the, the, this uh, bare front right here, double eagle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so everybody's going to be down blocking, down blocking, down blocking. Uh, and then with them having this nine technique right here, boom, there's a base block. So what's the fullback got to do? Well, I'm going to go uh, see, oh, there's no C gap player. Oh, here he comes. Boom. There's a kick out. Just gets enough, hitting that thing nice and tight. Tailback, right? You can see the timing drop. Quarterback is forcing him off the midline. 
And the number 64, the left guard here, you know, he, he needs to be getting vertical, uh, looking to go block someone downfield right here uh, because the fullback has the, uh, the B gap. But you could also see that if the fullback had something else to kick out or whiffed or whatever, uh, that left guard, he's the ultimate corrector. Uh, so you can see that he's in place to help out if need be. All right, so now uh, we've watched enough power clips. Y'all probably have a pretty good feel for power. Once again, if you want details uh, and coaching points for each and every single offensive lineman, uh, there are guys who know it even better than I do uh, that can you know, teach you uh, and coach you up on it, and I would recommend listening to them and following them. Right here, going to go over some of the RPOs and stuff that we run off of it. So right here, this is an arrow uh, screen uh, that, that we like to run. Uh, depending on if the arrow's on the front side or the back side, tells the quarterback if it's more of a C-gap RPO, uh, kind of like triple option, uh, true triple option, reading a defensive end, or if he's on the play side, you know, we're going to be kicking out this um, uh, uh, this defensive end. So now it turns into more of a D-gap RPO, so he's reading outside of the box, and he would just pull and throw if he likes the look. Uh, we got two receivers to the bottom, uh, so they got, you know, man for man, so the quarterback, you know, he just, all right, he, he sees pre-snap. We have good numbers. So who's the D-gap defender that could take it away? It's this player right here. So he would have to come down uh, uh, right right off, uh, right away. Um, it pulls him out of the, out of the box, um, uh, takes away a run uh, stopping defender if he does. But you can see he kind of backs up. So the quarterback pulls it, flings it. Solid job, leverage to landmark block. I know the receiver's on the, on the ground right here. But that hybrid uh, loses contain. So now we're able to get outside of that. Nice little stiff arm from the tight end. All right. And, and, and the scheme is, and, and for everything for the offensive line is the, uh, the same. Uh, you could definitely do this from pistol. Um, and, and that way the tailback would be, uh, you know, the t a little bit harder on the linebackers because, all right, which side is the read side for the RPO? Um, and the tailback would be stepping the same way. So it's pretty easy. For the uh, for the QB, all right. Good read, good fling, good play, right there. All right, another one that we'll do. A lot of people, uh, you, you know, will do it is you know basically hitches on the outside. You know, you can do anything really to that two receiver side that you're comfortable. Uh, on the back side, we got a we got a hitch called right here. Uh, so once again, all right, who's the D-gap run fitter that can make the play? That would be number eight right here. Um, and uh, the, the the quarterback uh, is going to use the bottom here as the gift side uh, because the tailback is going to be going over here to the left for uh, to run the run power. Uh, so the to the right over here, to the bottom of the screen, that's our gift side. When the quarterback sees number eight, uh, tight to the box like this. Uh, he knows the gift is good to go. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and just fling it out there. Uh, if not, he would be reading 34, uh, who, you know, obviously pretty snap. You can tell he's pretty much locked in to the number two receiver right there. Uh, so we'd be fine at the point of attack if we handed this off. But with number eight entering the box, quarterback's just going to pull, throw. Okay, uh, the, my preference uh, is for the right tackle here. He should really be base blocking uh, this defensive end uh, for this exact reason. Don't like quarterbacks getting hit uh, when they take the gift on the RPO. One more time for posterity. All right, you can see the down blocks right here. Okay, the left tackle, not a great job, right? You can see he's working up to the linebacker too soon. We have not gotten movement, enough movement on 51. Okay, 50, it's a hash play. We're on the hash. 51 should be on this side of the hash before the tackle uh, climbs. What a stud quarterback taking a shot and still playing. Okay, uh, right here, uh, we have an unbalanced formation into the boundary. Uh, so there are two receivers, and we're just running a quick screen right there. So similar to that arrow RPO, uh, since it's on the front side, this is a D-gap RPO. Uh, so if the guy head up to inside of the number two receiver comes, the quarterback's going to fling it out there because then we got numbers. Uh, if if um, if they keep two over two uh, at a distance, you know, within about seven yards or so, then the quarterback's going to hand it off. All right, so he sees the numbers, quick fling. Boom, right, nice, easy pitch and catch. Hey, the goal of power is to get four yards. 
we get four to five yards right here, we will uh, we'll take it every single time. Okay, once the, uh, on the on the back side here, um, not quite sure uh, why the the center is not necessarily working back. Uh, could have been a game plan deal, uh, but boom, quarterback, quick decision, get the ball out, go get four or five yards, and success. Okay, uh, so uh, that is the power portion of the clinic. Uh, let's get to the Gallup portion of the clinic. Uh, so uh, fullbacks often go unrecognized. Uh, they're basically like uh, the offensive lines, like little Bash brother. Uh, they're, to me, they're like the descendants of Thor. They're, they're meat eaters. Uh, they are butt kickers. Uh, they, they just go and try and pillage uh, whatever their uh, land they're trying to conquer. Uh, maybe not the smartest guys or best looking guys in the world, but uh, they like to hit. Um, and we, we love those kinds of guys on the, on the team or ladies, whatever it might be. All right. So uh, for the fullbacks, uh, you know, just want to kind of go through the progression of why we ended up using a specific technique for the kickout block. Uh, so in 2014, we had a tough athletic senior. Uh, so we just gave him the usual coaching points of, hey, we're going to aim at the B gap. We're going to banana out. We want a mandatory kick out on the uh, C or D gap defender, uh, near foot, near shoulder. Um, uh, so if, it, if I'm going to the right, it should be uh, right shoulder um, uh, making contact, near foot, near shoulder. Um, and it went well. In 2015 to 2017, we had a big, tough, athletic three-year starter, a man, Robbie Mangus, uh, who went on to play at Dartmouth. And now after graduating, I think he transferred to Buffalo or something like that. Uh, Robbie's a great dude, stud football player. And once again, we gave him the same coaching points. And we're like, man, we must be geniuses because our fullbacks are kicking people out and kicking ass. It's great. But then in 2018, we had a very athletic, very physically gifted sophomore. Uh, he ended up changing to defensive end um, and, and he went out, he's playing uh, college football at, uh, at Navy. And, you know, th this quote from Swingers, I think encapsulates him quite well, where he has, I got these claws and these fangs, man. And you're looking at your claws and you're looking at your fangs and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what to do, man. I don't know how to kill this little bunny. With this, I don't even know how to kill the bunnies, man. And that was our issue is that, He's so talented, just like the 2014 kid and the one from 2015 through 2017. And we're just like, why is he not getting the job done? Because he, he's, he's not making the kickout blocks like he's capable of doing. And we're giving the same coaching points, the same drills and everything. And the job is just not getting done. Um, and, and so what happens is in um, 2019, uh, we were like, hey, we need this kid on defense. Uh, we're going to take this uh, linebacker uh, who is a little bit undersized to play linebacker, um, you know, not, not um, athletic enough necessarily to, you know, be a starter or a, a big time contributor on the defense. So, hey, let's find a spot for him. And, hey, we, we, we now need a fullback. Uh, he's a hard, he was a hard worker. He's accountable. He's committed. Uh, but with him being undersized, we're like, okay, if the bigger, more athletic, uh, more physically gifted kid can't make the kickout block happen, then how is this kid going to be able to do it? Uh, and so this is where we are like, okay, we got to come up with a gallop technique and we used it with him. And you'll see him in video clips, kicking out guys who are four stars and five stars who are playing, you know, at the highest levels, you know, Georgia and all that good stuff. Um, uh, and he plays at D3 Catholic, uh, doing a great job there. Great man, Derek Akins. Um, but we had to help him out. Uh, and then in uh, 2021, obviously 2020 COVID year, nothing going on there. Uh, we had uh, a rising uh, senior uh, who he's tough, good size, kind of awkward, uh, not, you know, just naturally athletic. But once again, hard worker, accountable, committed. And so we're going to give him this technique uh, and see if now with a bigger guy, how well this technique can work. So we're trying to help the O-line's bash brother. Uh, and these were the issues that we were having with the kickout blocks. Uh, we would have the lunge and whiff, uh, just trying to throw your uh, face in there, and then you end up just throwing your whole entire body out of the window and whiffing. Uh, getting driven back. Uh, so whether you're smaller, you're not in a good um, uh, position with three joint flexion and some momentum on uh, that, that that's balanced, you know, given driven back. So now I'm no longer kicking out the C gap. I'm getting driven into the B or the A gap. 
uh, coming in too high, right? Bad, bad pad level, bad hip height. And being too small, uh, that, that, that makes it tough. I mean, I would try and do the kick out block to the best that I can, but being 5'5", 150, all right, I'm a little chubby now, 160, um, it'd, be, it'd be really hard for me to do it. But if I'm in great position, it gives me a chance. Uh, so we're doing, you know, giving the same old coaching points uh, that we gave to guys in 2014 through 2017 to that dude, he was supposed to be a dude in 2018. Um, uh, and we're getting, you know, just the, the, the same results of kind of getting our butts kicked a little bit. Uh, when, when we didn't have a guy who could just do it. Um, uh, so just the thought of, hey, giving those coaching points, that's not the same as technique. So, hey, near foot, near shoulder. That's a coaching point. That's not necessarily a technique that someone can use in order to get to near foot, near shoulder. All right, and then, you know, the lessons that we got from the D1 gurus, we were asking around prominent schools that run power, like how do you teach your fullback to run power? And the constant, the, the, the similar result, the similar phrasing that they would use is, man, we just have to find one person in the country a year that can do it. So they're just finding guys who can do it. Uh, whereas us at the high school levels and lower levels, you know, we just can't find, uh, you know, hey, we're going to recruit a guy to be a fullback. Um, they're usually uh, guys that are kind of uh, land of misfit toys. They can't quite play this, that, or the other thing due to lack of athleticism, lack of size, lack of speed, whatever. Uh, so they kind of are relegated to that fullback spot. Um, so, man, what are, what are we going to do? You know, there's, there's just nothing we can do. Uh, and that is where uh, we make fullbacks great again with the Gallup technique. Uh, it's modeled after the offensive line, uh, the, the, the Gallup, you know, on a tackle on power um, who, you know, they're trying to, you know, get three joint flexion, stay square, uh, get low, explode low to high with near foot, near shoulder. And I have a video clip that I'll start with. Uh, that shows the gallop technique from the offensive line. Uh, defenses use this too. Uh, there's a, a video you'll see from you know the one and only K Coach Dan Casey. Um, uh, that is uh, the the scallop uh, technique, which once again is getting into near foot, near shoulder, while staying square, staying under control, but being able to explode from low to high and knock the crap out of somebody. Um, and so then the last part of this is, you know, the outside arm, you know, when we go low to high, hey, we're going to be able to get the flipper is what guys, most guys are going to want to strike with. As I go into a guy, it's kind of, you know, some guys maybe can do the hand, but we've seen a lot of guys more confident in bringing the flipper. And then their inside hand is more of the insurance. So once I've created that kick out block, now I can boom, bring that hand inside as insurance if that guy's trying to spin over the top of me or run around with speed and depth. So now let's go ahead and get to the video portion of the Gallup technique. Okay, so right here we got some video dealing with the Gallup technique. Our focus is obviously going to be on the fullback, but right here our focus is going to actually be on the right tackle. Uh, so uh, what you're going to see right here is the right tackle uh, using the offensive line version of the Gallup technique. Or you can see, just like it says in the video, force is generated off the second step into the hip of the three technique. You can see near foot, near shoulder, staying square with one leg staying behind the body to help generate the force. And you can see the low to high explosion right there. Really good example of the offensive line gallop technique. And then here is the scallop technique uh, that uh, the uh, I think this is a Patriots. It's from Dan Casey on Twitter. You can see the same idea, near foot, uh, near shoulder, staying square, uh, driving from that back leg until it's time to explode. Boom. Right back leg, near foot, near shoulder. Okay, so... Uh, right here, uh, the fullback, my man Derek Akins, uh, he, he was a D3 football player, which is awesome. Um, he's about to go kick out a defensive end who, you know, was a, a five-star, I believe, uh, and he's at Georgia right now. 
So you can see, uh, you know, Derek's getting the job done. You can see how he's in really good position right here, near foot, near shoulder, uh, and then does a good job using that inside hand as insurance as that defensive end tries to go over the top, and Derek drives him clear out of the screen uh, as everybody else clears away for a touchdown, okay? Once again, you can see, even if we're in that sniffer position, we want to get near foot, near shoulder, boom, right? And this is what we're looking for, near foot, near shoulder. I really want that foot in the ground, this foot, uh, the, the, the backside foot behind me. And then the inside, you can see the flipper, and then you see the inside hand as, boom, there's the insurance right there. It's going to be really hard for this defender to fight over the top, and I want to keep that exact leverage to the landmark uh, and keep them outside of the A gaps. And great drive and finish. All right, so uh, now I'm going to highlight my man uh, Robbie Mangus right here. Uh, this is the uh, uh, fullback. Uh, I believe this is 2016. Um, and you can see, you know, big athletic guy, boom, near foot, near shoulder, absolutely a crusher uh, right there. But, you know, the thing when you run into it like Robbie does is if you don't time it up well enough, you might whiff, you might, you might miss. So a uh, good end zone shot, right? This once again, he's using the same kind of coaching points, B gap, banana, mandatory kick out. All right. And right here, you know, this, this ain't bad, right? But you can see that Robbie gets caught with his foot basically out of the ground, a lot softer in the shoulder. His back foot isn't really into the ground. You know, he has been in his ankles, knees, and hips, but he's not able to explode low to high. As a matter of fact, he loses the pad level game, really the hip level game right here, and gets knocked back despite being a bigger, more physical athlete than who he was blocking right there. All right, from, uh, from, the, from the eye, okay, once again, he's going to run into it, right? And once again, he, he's trying to go near foot, near your shoulder, aim right, hit right. Uh, but you can see, you know, his, his backside foot is actually in front now. So he doesn't, he's not in a real power position. And although he's technically lower than the other guy, um, you can see he's not in a great position to go, uh, you know, really dominate this block and, and hold on to it. Luckily, he's athletic enough to be able to turn and all that. But not every fullback is going to be as athletic as my man Robbie. All right, so right here uh, is the, uh, the, the 2018 kid, um, uh, number 23 at fullback, right? B-gap, banana, aim left, hit left. You can see he's, um, you know, aim left, hit left, but near foot is not in the ground. Um, you know, he's not trying to time up his uh, feet, or he just didn't because we didn't coach him well enough. Uh, does this kick out block happen? Sure, but you can see he's getting knocked into the B-gap, and if it weren't for the guard kind of bumping him, uh, he probably would have been driven back into the B or the A gap, despite being a physically talented uh, player. All right, this is against um, uh, an opponent that we should just basically be able to dominate. And, hey, does he make the kickout block happen in the C gap? Sure, but you can see how he gets driven back and constricts that and almost gets, you know, his, his knee taken out. Um, he's, this is more of a position block than an actual kick out block right here, right? So we want near foot, near shoulder. Um, and then we want this foot really behind the body to help explode from low to high. All right, this is the, the, the classic lunge and lip uh, whiff. So, you know, he's trying to be near foot, near shoulder. But instead of using the gallop, it's like, oh, I got to time it up perfect and the whiff. All right, and then another one, you know, I, I, I believe that the gallop helps fight against this where you are near foot, near shoulder, but then that near foot gets uprooted out of the ground. And once again, I think if he had that back foot really driving and he's going low to high, as opposed to just hopping and kind of being flat, we get a kick out and not a, not a stalemate or getting driven back. All right, and this is, you know, almost like the, the, the same exact deal, but now position block, right? 
getting driven and turned into the hole. You can see how tight the tailback has to hit that uh, as opposed to having more space with the kick out. All right, and this is just go, hey, this is number 23, and this is what happens when he's able to, to time it up, right? You can see he's getting into almost like a gallop. Boom, near foot, near shoulder. This is the power position. Backside leg, behind, helping create explosiveness. You can see the shin angle, the three-joint flexion in the ankles, the knees, and the hips. He's winning the hip leverage, and he's going up and into him, right? He's going from low to high. Boom. Now that's a kickout block, but you saw from the previous ones that due to a lack of coaching technique given to him, he wasn't able to be as successful, right? And this, this is same against the same opponent. You know, yeah, it's going the other way, but you can see how he's position blocking, getting driven back. It's okay, but it's not a kickout. It's not great. It's not butt kicking like we really want, All right? So, uh, you know, back to our man, Derek. Uh, and you'll see his uh, gallop technique right here. You can see the difference, right? He's uh, got his back leg back the whole entire way, near foot, near shoulder, exploding from low to high, driving that dude out of the screen. Right? And so this way, there isn't as much thinking. I can quickly hop to get to three joint flexion, get my feet grounded, so now I can go low to high. Whereas before, if I'm running to it, man, I gotta be really athletic and talented to get my feet into that position or I'm gonna get caught off guard. Really good job, right? Just another great example from Derek. You got your lead foot staying in front, right? I would like to see that left foot stay back. He's still in good position, though, good body position, good three-joint flexion, uh, good, you know, good controlled lean into, into the kickout block. Boom, right? He's in, he's in a good body position. The gallop allows him to stay under control uh, and, and come to balance at the moment of truth. Gallop, 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 right? Keep galloping on, on my path until there's something to kick out. And boom, you can see, once again, he's in control. He's able to get grounded, go from low to high. Is it, what was it, is it perfect? No, there are things that can be approved in that, but you can see that since he's balanced and under control, he's able to adjust a lot more easily as opposed to maybe some of those more athletically talented guys who didn't, right? In a sniffer position, I'm going to drive from that back, from my backside leg, near foot, near shoulder, right? And number 16, that's a division one football player right there. And we're able to keep him in that CD gap, um, you know, a little bit of a stalemate, but man, that guy's bigger, more athletic, more talented, and Derek isn't getting driven back into the hole. Why? Three joint flexion, near foot, near shoulder, and he's able to quickly adjust so that he can time up at the moment of truth to create an impact from low to high. Once again, sniffer position. Derek's a little bit higher right here, and, and he's letting that, that inside foot, his backside foot come up. He's successful. He's able to um, you know, be a good enough athlete to position himself, but you really want to try and keep that backside leg behind you can see that he's able to drive from it and then you know hey the near foot is not in the ground uh like like we want but he's not getting blown backwards and he's not whiffing uh he just got to try and reestablish, get himself grounded so he can make the kick out happen right and once again being able to time yourself up i'm in a more balanced control position if he was running he doesn't maybe hit this as clean and he gets jacked up, but instead he's ready with a three joint flexion, able to make the kick out happen. And you got to love the finish. All right, now he's going against another division one uh, power five football player, you know, a defensive end who's really a defensive tackle at the end of the day. 
Okay, and you can see balance under control, near foot, near shoulder. You know, I don't like his backside foot right here. Um, and once again, it, it's 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 a fairly simple technique. You just got to keep working it. Um, it's a little bit harder from the sniffer position, but you can see just with the even just understanding, like, okay, I got to get to three joint flexion and I have a good good base. They still able to get it done. Love this clip. Look at look at them. Look at these two lift my man off the ground. Boom, he's up in the air because we're going low to high. You can see the gallop. And you can see how tight he is off the tackle kick out or uh, down block right there. All right, I think I got only one or two more shots of, of Derek. Really good gallop once again, kicking out a five star player who's you know at uh, who, who who signed at Georgia. Back foot back, keep it back. Boom, really good position. I'm in a very powerful position right here. And now I'm able to drive. That's a really good job by, by a D3 football player on a five-star kid. All right, so now this is the uh, fullback that we had last year uh, who, you know, he's big and, you know, pretty physical, uh, a, a little bit goofy and awkward, right? Trying to keep that back foot back, the inside foot back, near foot, near shoulder. And then you can see the offhand right here. This right, this hand right here uh, is for insurance in case that guy tries to fight over the top um, of you and he's able to drive. Right, and then, you know, he's, he, he's not perfect. So you can see when he, they, when he runs into it, not a good enough athlete necessarily to you know, get himself as grounded as Derek, but he does a good job of finding his balance right here. Once again, would just want to see this left foot stay behind the whole way. Drive from the left. Drive from your left foot. Driving from that backside foot will move your front side foot. Drive and catch, as all those offensive line guys want to say, thank to LaCharles Bentley. All right, this is a, a, a younger kid. Um, uh, who you can see he's more, you know, he's running into the line of scrimmage. He ends up finding a, a good body position. He gets into the gallop. You know, the more athletic you are, the easier it is to get into that, to that gallop. It just doesn't always work because you could get caught off guard. Right, some guys would call this a false step right here. I'd rather have him step back with the left foot, but you can see, boom, he gets right into the gallop. And he's like, oh, man, he's right here, so I better quickly get my feet back into the ground. And then here comes the insurance hand as that dude goes up the field. Right, so the preference is to drive from your backside foot instead of false step him with the, uh, with the right foot. There's nothing wrong with this false step as long as you can get into the gallop. I prefer, once again, to see him step back with the left foot so that I can drive from that from the get go. He would, he, instead of kind of being surprised and having to adjust right here, he probably would have been able to gallop straight into that dude and create an even bigger impact. Right? This is, you know, so, okay. Hey, he tends to false step uh, as, you know, false step in air quotes. It's really not a bad thing. Plyo step is probably a better way to term it. But let's keep that right foot back, right? You can see this is, this is where, like, he's a little bit awkward, uh, not, not the most athletic, but he's able to get into the gallop position and make a pretty decent decent block. So, you know, but, you know not, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but you can see how he's just not running into it um, and, uh, and getting caught off guard, right? This was the uh, example of the uh, touchdown from earlier. Right, you're going to see that plyo step with the right foot here. Boom. Get into the gallop, tight off the butt of the tackle, and kicks out the first thing that he sees in the C gap. All right, I love this clip. Uh, this is, um, you know, our, our developmental squad. This is, you know, scout team, whatever you want to want to say, number 30. A man, James Hurdy, I've taught him since sixth grade. You can see the gallop technique from James. This is almost, this is like, this is a clinic film right here. All right, once again, plyo step, 
but it gets him in the position. Gallop, gallop, gallop. And then you can see how quickly James gets his feet grounded so now it can explode from low to high. And I love James, not the most physically imposing or talented kid, but you can see that no matter who you are, if you're going to do it right, it gives you a chance, uh, even if you're, you know, out talented or outsized or out af uh, athleted, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to stay grounded, gallop the whole entire way. Now what I'd love to see with James right here is, you know, better athlete is going to be a little bit more under control. Boom. I, I, I fight with that inside hand. I stay connected the whole way. And he does turn um, uh, and does, does a solid job right there. Got a couple more. Here we go. All right, so this is um, uh, a lot of those clips of that that um, uh, fullback were from the spring. So now you can see in the fall uh, uh, a little bit better, right? Still works the plyo step, but now you can see the gallop straight into uh, a big old defensive lineman. He loses uh, a little bit of control right there. You know, keep leverage to landmark, uh, but you know who knows how it would have gone. If, uh, if he didn't gallop in the first place. Or you can see he kind of starts like, uh, loses his gallop, you know, starts uh, uh, running a little bit more as opposed to using the inside hand as insurance and keeping leverage to landmark. Right, plyo step with the left foot now. So this is much better than in uh, the, the the spring where he was always stepping back with the right foot. So now he's going, okay, if I'm going to gallop, I got to plyo step with that left foot. You can see tight, tight, tight. Here comes the first thing in the C gap. And now here comes the kick out. Really good job. Feet in the ground quickly. Brr, 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 brr. Gallop, gallop, gallop. Right. And then at the moment of truth, if I got to get him in the ground uh, now, uh, you can because you're cutting grass with your feet the whole entire way, as opposed to running and possibly getting caught with a foot out of the ground. This is basically going to keep one foot in the ground the whole way. And if I have to quickly get uh, my other foot in the ground, I'm going to drop my uh, ankles, knees and hips. Drop my pad level. Um, and it's, it's kind of like if I'm going to go up to dunk a basketball, not that. I've dunked many basketballs on real hoops, uh, but on my son's six foot hoop, I can I can slam it down. Um, and that's exactly how I do it. I quickly, boom, go down very quickly, sink, and then I can create that explosion up and out into the defender. All right, good example here um, uh, from Brogan. Uh, he, he's going against a kid who's got a bunch of offers from all over the place, um, uh, all these power five places. But you can see plyo step gets into gallop. Number five is kind of up the field. I'm going to use the flipper. Boom, create the connection, and I'll just run him around the horn. Okay, so that is my presentation on the pow A gap power scheme, uh, some you know technique and details in there that will hopefully help you. Uh, you know, obviously a gap power is a little bit different than the other versions of power that tend to hit, you know, a little bit wider or maybe more allowed to hit wider, whereas a gap power is a gap to a gap. And you're not blocking, you know, man scheme. It's true gap. And you're really blocking for the fit, forcing the defense to misfit by really focusing everybody on controlling these two A gaps through the windshield wiper effect of the down blocks and double teams. Uh, and then you have the second half of the windshield wiper with the two kickouts that you get. For near foot, near shoulder technique, we use the gallop. It's been very effective for us. We've been able to take guys who maybe aren't super athletic, who struggle in space, and you know, if, if they're caught running, they might get knocked out of the of the ballpark. But with the gallop, we've given them a technique so that they can quickly get their feet on the ground. They can strike near foot, near shoulder with three joint flexion, able to be explosive from low to high, quickly adjust on the fly in the chaotic moments of football, and then they always have the inside hand 
as insurance with the outside arm being the upper cutting flipper. So if you have any questions for me, uh, you can always feel free to reach out to me on, on social media. Um, once again, my name is Danny Schechter uh, and my Twitter handle and Instagram name are both the same, at Coach D. Shack. Uh, more than willing to share and talk a uh, great profession. Um, you got to love all the sharing that us football coaches do. Um, and once again, uh, you know, just the opportunity to present, you know, got to gotta once again thank um, my man Brian uh, from Intentionally Grounded for the opportunity. So uh, make sure you run the damn ball, run the power, uh, let, teach your fullbacks, give them the ability, the technique to go clobber some people, kick some ass, most importantly, Take care of yourself. Keep the main thing, the main thing, and that's the main thing you got to do. Uh, if you are a family man, family woman, um, make sure that that is your priority. I know that's what I've decided to do. I'm so happy, so thrilled. I'm going to miss Gonzaga, uh, but I'm really excited about the amount of time uh, I'm going to be able to spend with my family. Um, that's my beautiful wife, uh, my, my two kids and dog, as well as my parents, uh, my brother and his family. So uh, I don't know where I'm going to be in Chicago, but if you ever need anything from me, hit me up. Love sharing, love talking. Thank you very much for listening to my clinic and presentation on AGAT power and the Gallup technique for the fullback. Have a great day. This is Danny Schechter signing off. See you, love you, bye. Chicks dig touchdowns. Stay on the beach.